We know that more than 500 people are employed in the tourist business. And we know that uh, about 150,000 people stay at our hotels yearly. Okay. And uh, almost the same uh, uh, 150,000 stays at, at, at camping. And uh, 500,000 guests visit Bong Bong Len and uh, fewer, uh, about 75,000 goes to governors. My opinion, the main reason, uh, our uh, main attraction is Kapish Mine, our beach here, it's and the, 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 the old harbour and so on. And uh, many people from Nestle goes here uh, several times a week, and we do not stand at the bridge counting them, but uh, last Sunday we had the uh, uh, sailing comp competition yeah. here and I think 15,000 people were around the, 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 the channel. That's a lot. Yeah, sure, sure. And the weather was nice and everything was nice. Many people come here for a week because the kids want to go to Bombongland for, for one day. And then we have the guests here for another six days and can, can show them many other things. Uh, if you compare Nestwet to other Danish cities. Uh, is it uh, quite similar to others or is there something special what, what makes it famous? Uh, we are famous that uh, that way that we are uh, grounded uh, in uh, as a shopping city in 1135. That is kind of special and uh, we, we have we have most of the old city left and uh, in the early days as Pelle told you we, we worked much with trade and we still have much trade here. We have a, a big shopping center just in the edge of the city. You, you, you'll pass it tomorrow going to, to Pong Pong Land. Yeah. This is uh, Pong Pong Land you are visiting at the moment. Pong Pong Land is a park who has been here since 1992, our first year. It started with uh, some very small rides, a big shop where you showed how to produce candy because all the bonbon products uh, came out of the candy factory. A lot of uh, people wanted to see how we are making this strange candy. Yeah. And uh, the first year there came 170,000 people to see this yeah. candy. And then we start putting in uh, a small ride for the small children, some playgrounds, uh, a circus, uh, some, some theater people, and uh, then it had developed ever since. Okay, so uh, how, how many people to visit per day? Uh, annual, we will have a, between uh, 450 and 500,000 visitors. On a summer day like today, uh, there normally will be between five and seven thousand uh, visitors. Yeah. This is a big park, but how many how many rides do you have here? Different uh, kind of? In the Bong Bong we have about uh, 30 rides uh, who requires uh, an operator and then we have uh, additionally 30, 40 smaller playgrounds, air cushions, uh, jumping pillows, small things like that. We have some boats to sail in, but uh, about 30 uh, big uh, rides. So you have a right for everyone, so it doesn't depend how old are you? No, uh, of course there are some uh, height limits there, uh, due to security and so on. But uh, mostly Pong Pong Land is built for the whole family. And that means we have uh, rights for the smaller children down to two, three years. And until you get 99, uh, it's be funny for everybody. Uh, how many employees do you have here? We are uh, in Pong Pong Land, there are about uh, 30, 32. Uh, employees all years with the uh, maintenance staff, administration, marketing, 
and then we have about 400, 425 seasonal wood. Oh, that's that's a lot. How do you develop this this park? So, do you set up some uh, rights, or do you have new ones, or what do you do? Uh, in Pompona we have uh, new rights every year, yeah. and that uh, of course means that uh, sometimes we take out some of the old rights yeah. and replace them with new rights, and it's. Uh, more or less up to the visitors, the guests in Bong Bong Land, uh, what we're going to buy. We of course look at the, 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 the whole picture if we are going to need uh, some roundabouts, are we going to need a roller coaster or a water ride or whatever. And then we try to make the, the, the correct mix for the different ages and that we have something for the whole family. How many different kind of theme parks do you have in Denmark all around? In, in Denmark, generally, there are two theme parks. Uh, Bongbongland is one of the parks and Legoland is the other theme park. So, how popular are these in, in Denmark? I mean, does the, all the Danish people go at least once a year in theme park? Yes, uh, the Danes are going a lot in, in, the, in the summer parks, in the amusement parks in Denmark. Uh, we know that for sure and definitely Bongbongland is one of the most popular uh, park in Denmark <coughs> together with uh, Tivoli and Legoland is uh, the two big parks in, in Denmark and uh, Bong Bongland and a couple of other parks are having about the same size. Okay, and now you should say something to uh, our Finnish weavers from Rauma. Why should they come here in Nesvit and in Bon Bonland? I think the Finnish visitors should come to Nesvit because uh, Nesvit is a very, very nice city and they should come to Bong Bongland because we can have one or even two days with great fun and when you're having holiday. to make a roast beef okay. open sandwich on dark bread and first I'm gonna use some butter on the dark bread a lot uh, 10 grams and then some salad to get it high yeah yeah and then I'm gonna take the roast beef yeah it's a it is roast, so it's kind yeah. of red and, and nice to look on. Yeah. And it's about to get it really high, so it, uh, it looks nice. And, and fills a lot on the plating. Yeah. Yes. This is remoulade. And it's made by uh, a lot of red vegetables and uh, mayonnaise. Yep. Yeah. Put it on here. And fried onions. Yep. Horseradish. It's uh, strong. Yep. Yeah. Spiced. So is this like a traditional Danish food? Yes, it is. So, so when did, how long they have been eating this in Denmark? You know? um, since 18, 1880, oh, we so have been yeah. e eating this here. And that's something special. I heard that uh, all. It's Danish a luxury. Um, it's a luxury open sandwich. Yeah. yeah, and I heard that all the Danish people uh, they are used to e eat. Uh, these cold sandwiches in the lunchtime, yes. so they won't eat a uh, warm dinner. 
So they exactly. yeah. yeah. And then um, some pickled cucumbers. Like this. And I'm using paprika, yellow. To get the colors on the, on this plate. And some tomato, sliced with boats. Uh, how long it took for you that you learned how to make these sandwiches well? Not very long, it's very easy. <laughs> but uh, it tastes very, very good. And then I'm gonna put some green on to make it look nice, like this. And now it's ready. It's ready. Ready to enjoy. So you have uh, the longest river here yeah. in Nestwood, in Zealand. Suzon. Suzon is the longest river in Zealand. It is about 80 kilometers long. And uh, you, can, you, you can go there by canoe and 20,000 people do that every, every year. And in the end of it, if you, uh, you, you, you end in, in Nestved. Yeah. And uh, passing Hallerholm School, which is a very famous school. Uh, it's the only school left in Denmark, I think, where people get up when the teacher gets, gets into the classroom. And uh, they meet every morning in the church to, to sing and to say, Good morrow to each other, and uh, oh. uh, they are they are very uh, well dressed in uniforms. And, uh, so okay, on. so it's and it's uh, much used from for for for, for Danes living abroad, sending their homes uh, their children home to to go to school, school. if, if they are working in foreign embassies or whatever. And there's uh, about 500 uh, pupils there. We, we you know, for for example in Rauma we have a well, once a year we have a lace week yeah. and do you have that kind of yeah. happenings here? We have here we we call it a fest week. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that is in the start of August. Yeah. There's a lot of music and uh, culture uh, happenings and yeah. theatre and uh, whatever. And today we saw pictures that each year. You have some kind of circus coming here in the town, yeah. and they put elephants walking through the yeah. bridge and go to swim. Yeah, the reason why the elephants have to walk over the bridge is that the wagon that they are brought on is too high to uh, pass the, the bridge. Therefore, the elephants walk over the bridge, and it has become a, a big attraction it, it, it itself. Several thousand people come to watch them uh, walk over the bridge and bath at the sea here. And this year, uh, they, they were so glad for bathing that they they went several hundred meters out, and they had to go <laughs> out and get them back. You have you, you have to have to get three four hundred meters to see to get water at your back if you're an elephant. Yeah. So the, the, the water is that that low, and therefore they just kept walking. <laughs> well, Nestwood is a typical Danish city, where I think we are we are an average of Danish population living here in Nestwood. Some rich people, but not so many, but, but also poor people and, and many in between. Uh, we don't have uh, so much education as, uh, as uh, Denmark normally have. We, we don't have so many intellectuals as Denmark has, but uh, we still have uh, a good deal. And uh, uh, when, as regards their jobs, they also are on, on full scale. But most of the people are ordinary people working eight hours a day and having a family. And, and in Denmark, it is also very common that uh, they have two incomes in a family. And so we have to look after their children when they are small and when they go to school. And we also have to look after the, the old ones, their parents and their grandparents. So that's a community obligation in Denmark now because both father and mother has to do their jobs. Yeah. Uh, about the typical nest, uh, man in Nestwood, what, what does he do? I mean, uh, well, he what, is, what, what kind of people is... He's working in, uh, at the hospital, he's working in, in the social service, he's working in a factory or he's working in a shop or at, at an office. Mm -hmm. 
uh, a lawyer's office or an, uh, an audit, audit, auditing and, and all sort of, of uh, support uh, for, for financial business uh, is very important here. now in local company in Nestved with manager Lars Jensen. Mm. Uh, could you tell more about your your company? What is it? And it's a publishing company which have been established like nine years ago mm. and we are doing uh, websites for the Danish public schools, mainly the Danish schools, but we are also selling products into Sweden and with a few Finnish viewers as well and to northern Germany. The uh, main product we are selling and which we have been selling since the very first day of the company is a product about animals in, in the specific countries like Denmark of course and Sweden as well. Uh, tell me a little bit about the history of the company. How did you establish this and or how did the, the company was established by my partner Kim which mm. is a former Danish uh, teacher in mm. Danish public school and he's very interested in, in animals. Mm. So he was collecting data about them and he discussed uh, the uh, idea of having a website with some so-called professionals here in Denmark and they all said to him it's not such a good idea but uh, thanks God he, he thought otherwise himself so we, we did that at nine years ago, so about nine years ago. So nowadays <laughs> you can see it's, it was a good idea. It was a good <laughs> idea, yeah. We, we are now uh, about 18 to 20 people. Uh, to working engaged by the company here and uh, 12 of them working here in this office but uh, we have an office in Sweden as well in Lund Malmö and we have a few people working from home okay and uh, how big is your turnover we have a turnover of about 10 million Danish kroner a year now yeah it's like a 1.2 1.3 million euros yes uh, what do you like to uh, work here in Nestved is it how important important it's for you that a uh, company is working here in Nestwood? It doesn't really matter for us. I mm. mean, uh, we, are work we are based in Nestwood because Kim and I is both coming from mm. Nestwood. But most of our employees are coming from Copenhagen or other parts of Denmark. But then I think the Nestwood city thinks that it's important because you bring more people here working. Yeah, but the size of our company is not so big yet, so uh, yeah. I don't think we, it matters too much for <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, but uh, all the people which they get here, is, it's important. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we try to um, persuade our people to, to, to buy a house here or an apartment or yeah. something, because it's a bit shaky, the relationship, if they are still, like some of them are still working here but live in Copenhagen and Copenhagen is 100 kilometers away so, yeah, so it, it's a long tr transport every day. Yeah, uh, is, but do you have anything here in Nestwood what you need so is there any reason why you would like to? No, I move? see no reason for that. We have everything we need here. I mean the most important thing for us is the employees and we have what we need here and we can still get them here, the, the right quality and stuff like that. So. It's not a problem for us. We there are no reason whatsoever for us to move to Copenhagen, for example. Uh, what's the big difference? Uh, what are the differences between your company and, let's say, like traditional IT company? Well, the the thing is that we we don't produce the programs ourselves. Yeah. We we uh, our preference here is that we are, we are able to do uh, content which pe people in the schools are willing to pay for. 
So the production of content is important for us and not the uh, actual programming of the site. So the, the main difference is that we, we are more or less like a normal office. Yeah. And we have people like who's doing the program, who's writing the content, making the graphic and stuff like that. But otherwise, nothing else but a normal uh, office activities. Uh, do you have uh, other this kind of companies there? In Not Denmark? in this in this neighborhood now, but we have like 50 competitors. 50 in Denmark. In in Denmark, oh, yeah. Oh, that, that's a lot. Well, but they are most of them are a, a bit smaller than we are. And then we have, of course, like a, a handful of very big companies. But how about the competition? If if you have so many same kind of companies, well, we have a, we have a divided interest, so that we have our market share of mm. something, and the, the rest of the gang is splitting up the rest of it. So uh, we ha we don't have competitors which have a similar product to yep. ours. So people here in, in Denmark are so wise that they don't try to to eat other people's market, but they try to make their own market. Uh, you have won some kind of prize. Yeah, award, yeah we have this. What is that? This is an award we got last year uh, called the Gazelle Award, which uh, is the uh, proof of the, that some people at least believe that we are one of the better companies in Denmark. So we're quite proud of that, actually. <laughs> Should be. Uh, you say that there's op op option opportunity to the, our viewers that they could go to see yeah. your products yeah. in the Swedish language. Yeah, that's right. We sell a, uh, one of our products in Sweden today, which uh, in Swedish is called Svenska Jöse, which is of course stuff about Swedish animals in Sweden. Yeah. And uh, we are selling that product as well to some of the Swedish speaking schools in Finland yeah. on the west coast there. So. Um, your viewers are welcome to use the opportunity to go to that site for like for free for a month, for example. Yeah. Why are all the houses are almost all the houses? Why they are made? Uh, they are made made by uh, stone or bricks. Yeah. In, where, where, in, where in are the, the old, older? In the old days, yeah. all the houses were made of wood. Yeah. And uh, this is an island, and mm. there's space for so much wood. And if you cut all the time, you cut all the large trees to build houses from them. Then you come to a point where there is no more woods. Yeah. And that happened in Denmark around 1800. Yeah. At that time, we had to preserve the last remains of the woods in, in uh, Denmark. And from from that on, that time and onwards, we um, had to build in another material, and that was mostly bricks. So we have frame timber framed houses, but bricks are the the main uh, material in those houses. And later on, we go to complete brick houses. So that's why we haven't got the woods. <laughs> Uh, you say that you don't know, history doesn't know that uh, there has, has been big fire, fires here in Nestved. Yes, we do. But the last one was in 1280. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's like... And after 1280, so it was controlled so much that we have, have um, avoided all the, the city fires. It, yeah. it was a really big problem in these small towns with many houses and open fire in every house. So you had to be very, very careful because fire in one house meant fire in a large area. Because you're a museum, a museum uh, manager, you, you have to prefer which museum the people from Rauma should come and see here. They should visit Nestor Museum. We have two, two um, sections of the museum. Helionshuse, the Holy Ghost House, mm. where we have uh, a broad cultural history. Mm exhibitions and so on. And we have Bodhana by St. Peter's Church. Yep. Bodhana is with crafts, the Kela ceramics and the glass from Holmegård and um, that kind of stuff. And both both our museum uh, departments are very old buildings, medieval buildings, brick buildings from the 15th century. So they are very interesting to see both of them. 
and you should be very welcome. The entrance is free. <laughs>